Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I want to show you how you can prove these two very famous identities for trigonometric functions. It involves the uh, cosine and the sine of adding and subtracting two angles. So how can I prove these? I'm going to do this uh, using a simple geometrical argument. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. All right, let's get started. All right, the first thing I do to uh, begin this proof is we start with a unit circle. A unit circle has a radius of one. Uh, next thing I do is I define an angle and that angle is say going to be this one here with respect to my uh, X axis. And what I do now is I label the opposites and the adjacent uh, lengths uh, to this angle theta. Uh, these uh, look like this, and then you can label those now using our trig function sine and cos, right? If the radius is 1, the opposite is sine of theta, and the adjacent to the angle theta is cosine of theta. All right, so this is where we start off with. Now we're going to draw two angles and start our proof. So to start the proof, we now draw two angles, okay? I've got two black lines here. Remember that each one of these has a length of one, right? Because I drew this unit circle. Now I've labeled two angles. The angle A here is for the first one and angle B is between the two black lines. That means that this angle over here has to be the sum of angles A and B together. Okay, so this is going to be our starting point. I'm just going to kind of clean this up a little bit. Now we're going to start from here, and now we have to, again, draw opposites and adjacents for some of these triangles and then link them together to make the proof. All right, so we start with our unit circle and the angles that I've uh, included there. The next thing I'm going to add are three projections, and here they are. So I have the projection of uh, this top black line here on the x-axis. I also have a projection over here on the x-axis. And I'm going to project the top line onto the bottom line here. Okay, so if you understand these three projections here and these angles here are all going to be 90 degrees, now I could start defining the sines and cosines of these angles. Let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to add a couple distances. Let's start with the green line. That one is pretty straightforward. So for the green, again, the black line is a unit length. So that means that this green line here, it's the projection of that segment onto the second segment. So this guy here should be cosine of B. All right, that one should be pretty straightforward. Uh, what else? How about the projection here of, again, the top line, that segment, onto the x-axis? That's what I've defined here by this red uh, arrow. This one here should simply be cosine of A plus B because you see that whole angle. That is a unit length. So that means that this guy here is cosine of a plus b. Now we're going to project the green one again onto this x-axis. And that's what I've defined by this black arrow right here. So that black arrow then has to have a length. Now careful, I don't have a unit length now anymore because I'm only taking part of that segment. And I'm projecting it now on this x-axis. So I'm left with whatever length of that segment is. It's cosine of b multiplied by the cosine of A. Okay, so now you can start seeing where these multiplicative terms are going to show up in my proof. All right, so now we have to link uh, some of the similar triangles and look at the projections on the y-axis. All right, the last step for the first part of the proof is just doing this guy, right? If we can figure out whatever length this is, then you can relate uh, everything here connected with the projections on the x-axis. We'll have cosine of a plus b, we'll have cosine of b, cosine of a, and whatever this length is. So uh, in order to kind of put things together, we're forced going to look at this triangle here. We have the angle uh, b is defined here. That means that the opposite, this dashed green line here, has to be sine of the angle b because the black line has a unit length. So that's a good start. Uh, the other thing we have to do is if we can somehow figure out what is the angle and which angle am I looking at? What is this angle up here? Right? If you can figure out that angle, then right away you'll be able to determine what this length is here. And that's the same length that appears here with the blue arrow. So in order to do this, we have to look for similar triangles. 
And if I define this angle, so look where this bottom triangle is here, this smaller one, okay? Now, whatever angle this is alpha, it has to be the same angle on this side, okay? So once you do that, and then you know you have 90 degrees over here, you know you have 90 degrees over here, that means that if this is the angle A, then this guy here inside must also be the angle A right here. So look what we have. We have another right angle triangle. We have the hypotenuse, which is sine of the angle B, and we have the angle A right here. So let's go ahead and remove this guy. That means right away we should know that this length, which is the same as the one I've uh, depicted by that blue arrow, has to be sine of the angle A multiplied by sine of the angle B. All right, now you can put everything together, right? Because you know that the total length, the total length, or the one that we're looking for here is the red one, cosine of A plus B, right? You could just see it from the dimensions. Cosine of A plus B must be equal to, all right, the black line. The black line has a length of cosine of A, cosine of B, and then you have to take away this segment, right? So you look at, you end up switching the sign, right? And then the length of the blue segment is simply sine of A, sine of B. So there you have it. We've actually proved one of the identities uh, that I wanted to show you, okay? So that is the sum of two angles ends up being this combination of cosines and sine functions. All right. Once you have this one down, uh, to prove the next one is pretty straightforward because all you're doing now is just switching the sign. What if I wanted to prove cos of A minus B? Well, again, you're just simply substituting the angles. Remember, cos of A minus B is nothing more than cos plus, and the angle is just reverse the polarity of that second angle. So go ahead and do that. So you get what? Cos of A, you get cos of minus b then you get minus sine of a and then you get multiplied by sine of the angle minus b okay so now you have to just remember some relationships right cosine of a negative angle is the same thing as the cosine of the angle and sine of an angle or a negative angle now you have to switch the sign is the same thing as minus the sign of an angle. Okay. That's because this is uh, a positive function and this here is an odd function. So that really simplifies this term. That's cosine of a, this here simply becomes cosine of B. Um, you put the negative sign, you have sine of a, and now this second term becomes negative sine of B. So that means I have to switch this and this here becomes sine of B. So now we've proved both statements, okay? So this guy here and the first one. So now how do we go ahead now and prove the sine of both angles? Again, now we're gonna look at the projections along the y-axis to set up um, some relationships between the different terms. All right, so to prove the second identity, what we have to do now is work with the vertical projections. Again, we're gonna work with our large triangle that makes an angle A plus B. Again, if I take the vertical projection, it ends up being this total length right here. If the hypotenuse of that triangle is one, that means that this guy here has to be sine of A plus B. Okay, so that's one relationship. Uh, now we're gonna focus on uh, this triangle right down here at the bottom. And I wanna find the opposite, right? That blue line right here. Well, again, I've already shown that the green one was cosine of the angle B. So that means that's the length, that's the hypotenuse. That means that the opposite has to be um, sine of the angle A multiplied by the length of the hypotenuse, which is cosine of the angle B. All right, so what are we left with now? We're left with trying to find what is the length of this purple line right here. Now I've already made the argument that we had similar triangles, so I've identified this top angle here as being the angle A. Um, so all we have to do then, and we also know that the hypotenuse of this similar triangle, that small one, the hypotenuse was sine of the angle B. So if I'm looking for the projection of this hypotenuse 
onto the y-axis, I'm going to be left with, again, it's going to be sine of b multiplied by cosine of the angle a, All right? Because we have this length right here is sine of b. That's the hypotenuse. And I will only want to know the projection, the projection onto this axis right here. So I take the cosine of that angle multiplied by the hypotenuse. All right, now you have to put everything together, right? We should be able to see that um, adding both terms, right? I'm looking for this guy. That total length has to be this one plus this one. And that is the identity that we were trying to show up above, right? So we have sine of A plus B uh, has to be equal to, let's just take the bottom one here, sine of A, cosine of B, and I have to add them up plus... Uh, again, uh, sine of B, cosine of A. Now you, if you want to show the term with the negative sign over here, all you have to do then is use our properties of sines and cosines uh, in order to show that. So again, I'm going to proceed using the exact same argument as I did before. So all you have to do then is just do sine of A. What are we doing now? Cosine of minus that angle plus sine of minus the angle B, and then cosine of A. Now we use the properties of either even or odd functions, and we know that cosine is an even function, so it does not change if I have a negative in front of that angle. So this remains cosine of B. However, this guy is going to change signs. I'm gonna have a negative that's going to come out, and here you're gonna have sine of B, cosine of A. Okay, and that is sine of A minus B. All right, there we have it, folks. We've proved those two trigonometric identities using a unit circle and a lot of projections. You just have to take care of the labeling. Now, one of the tricky parts was identifying this similar triangle, but once you do that, then it's just identifying all the lengths and the projections of that uh, similar triangle on the X and Y axes and putting it all together. All right, hopefully you understood this video. Good luck.